Let it come out. It's not bad. does what? Whatever he wants. Yes, sir, Mr. Alexander Wood is a very capable jet. Don't you uh, ever get thirsty? Not at 10 in the morning. Well, it was exactly at 10 a.m. that Mr. Martini invented the olive. That was terrific. Just terrific. It feels just like you're flying and you can keep on going forever. What a perfectly delightful idea. Sounds still ready? Still. Are you uh, ready for the Olympic chef? Gypsy, you really ought to try it. It's a brand new feeling. You mean I've missed one? Had enough for today? Yes, Joe. I'm expecting Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones. They've been out seeing the sights. I hope the sights are tied down. Well, Mr. Jones and Mr. Smith want to take a lesson today? Yes, I think they'll they... probably be wanting to take one all night. Well, I doubt that. There's a cougar on a rampage in this area. I don't think I'd be frightened with you around. Jackson looks as though he could take care of anything, doesn't he, Alan? Happiness Lodge. The place is well named, you. Thanks. I like it. Mighty hard place to get to, though. I like that too. I bet you're hard to get to. Hello, Joe. Hiya, boss. Have a good time? Good enough, boss. Boy, this place is great. We went through a barn full of horses, and we took Polaroid pictures of people skiing and fishing. <laughs> oh, yeah, and uh, we found a mine. Gypsy and I are going back to the lodge. I think it might be a good idea for you two to stay up here and let Mr. Jackson show you the ropes. <laughs> well, he'll need one to hold him up. They'd better learn if we're going to make that cross-country run tomorrow. Drop by the lounge later. I'd like to take a look at those pictures. Right, boss. Let's go, Chippy. What are you trying to do? Make that yokel suspicious? Did I see something wrong, my sweet? One day I'm going to shut that pretty little mouth of yours for good. Promises. Nothing but promises. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, that's fine. Both doing very well. It's just a matter of practice. You'll get plenty of that tomorrow in the cross country. Listen, Gil, when you make that, that turn, how do you do that thing you, you told us about? Well, you've been doing pretty well. Yeah? It's a question of getting your weight distributed over the seas in the right way. You okay if I leave these here till tomorrow? I'll wear the boots. That'd be fine. Is that your dog? Yes. He's half mine. Will he bite me if I pet him? No, he's very affectionate. Well, they say a dog always mirrors his master. Co-master. Oh, excuse me, co-master. What's your name? Jill. Well, how do you do? My name's Jack. <laughs> oh, really? No, I was only kidding. It's Marty. How long have you been here? All my life. No, I mean here at the ski shop. I started this year. You've never skied before? Oh, yeah, I've skied. I've uh, been just, you know, kind of brushing up. It's funny, every time I look at you, I smile. Hmm. Did I tell you I knitted this sweater? It's a great color. What is it? Cedar brown. Funky color. Will you knit me one? <laughs> You'll have to get in line. I mean, the, you like to knit. Is that your scene? I like to do things with my hands. I'm going to take up painting when I get the nerve. All you have to do is to start painting. But I don't know anything about it. Well, you don't have to know anything about it. All you have to do is to do it. Well, who knew anything when they first started painting? What if it's bad? Well, it's not bad or good. If it's what you like to do, do it. Really? I wish I had known that about six years ago. I wanted to do something, but I was afraid. You shouldn't smoke, you know. It's bad for your lungs. How, how old are you? I don't like to tell. How old do you think I am? 20. 19. How old are you? How old do you think I am? <laughs> 25. 27. Uh, you're not married, are you? No. Would you like to have dinner? I don't know you. Have you got a boyfriend? No. I have to cook dinner every night for my brother. Well, that's okay. I'll give him a quarter to go to the movies. Hi, Jill. I see you met Mr. Jones. Call me Marty. Hi, Gil. This is my brother. Well, I think I better give him a buck. <laughs> I'm taking Mr. Jones and his uh, friends on a cross-country trip to the cabin tomorrow. We'll be leaving pretty early in the morning, so you and I will have to go over those orders tonight. Sorry, Jill. Sure, Gil. Jill and Gil, that's kind of cute. We don't have much imagination around these parts. But I guess Gil and Jill is about as original as Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones. Attention, can we have another patrolman at the bottom of the number one chair right now? Oh, give me a home where the wakeless is round, where the rock and the rugged ones Sorry, but I think 
you're going to be all right. Good. Say, I need about $20 for supplies. Marty? I'd like you to reconsider taking this cross-country run. It's two days to the cabin. If anything happens, we're out of luck. Well, don't worry. If Byron breaks a leg, we can always shoot him. <laughs> Hi, Jackson. Did you get that cougar? Well, not yet, Miss Burlett. I'll see you later. Won't you have a drink with us? Mr. Jackson has to get things ready for the trip tomorrow. We'd like to leave between 8 and 8.30. Is that all right, Gil? That's fine. I'll see you later. People like that really exist? Not for you, Charles. Not for me, Charles, because I'm with you, Sam. You said it, Jane. the happy little people enjoying their freedom. So she go and around we go. What kind of freedom is that? They're all tied down to their petty little futures. Might be nice to have a future, even a petty little one. What's bugging you, Charles? Don't you like to set up anymore? Anymore has been a long time. What's wrong? Nothing's changed. Maybe I have, Charles. What's with your friends? They're spending. Scotch on the rocks, three bourbons with branches, one daiquiri and two gin fizzes. Hi, Gil. Hi, Natalie. I feel like a little dance. Just stay put, Charles. Whee! Ah. Howdy, cowboy. Howdy yourself. Where's Natalie? She was here a minute ago. Come on, nature boy. I want to dance. Wigman, what goes on behind that big silent face of yours? Nothing clever enough to interest you, I'm afraid. Well, we don't have to be clever all the time. I can talk about the important things, like uh, nature. What do you think of nature, Gil? I guess it's pretty natural. <laughs> do you have a girl? Two or three. Well, I don't think that's enough. What's that in there? Part of the broken boot mine. Oh, yeah? Let's go take a look. Nothing to see this time of night. Besides, it's kind of spooky in the dark. And there's been this big cat around. Hmm? Well, this, uh, baby will take care of any little, uh, pussy cats. How come you pack a gun? Well, Gil Jackson told me about the cougar. Come on, take a look. Come on. 
What are you going to do now? I've never seen a gold mine before. I want to take a look. Come on. Ball down there? Uh huh. Is that pretty blonde woman your wife? Yeah, she's my boss's uh, secretary. Oh, I get it. She sure can do her share of drinking. You sure can do your share of talking. drinks here. No. I used to be a dark-haired girl. I'm still serving. She was here an hour ago. Sorry, we can't help you. I can't even help myself. Set the charges. The nine o'clock. Hey, what's bugging you? You killed that good-looking chick. What chick? Natalie. You mean the girl that works in the bar? You took that girl. I know all that. 
He took the barmaid to the mine and somehow managed to let her get knocked off. Knocked off? She said, the dark cat girl. I don't know. Maybe the cougar got her. There wasn't any cougar. I saw this thing and I saw this egg right down in the shaft where I planted the charge. Are you going to blow up that mine tomorrow? At 9 o'clock. That means that you and Nature Boy will be at the top of the ski lift at 8.30. You're going to blow up that mine. Kill all those people. I think you're nothing but a mass murderer. Two bars go. Tomorrow's Sunday. Nobody works. You all set for the big event? You certainly look bright and shiny this morning. Are you expecting maybe a hangover? I'm certainly not a girl from a soap commercial. Good morning. Is it that time already? You were the one that said eight. I must have been out of my mind. I just checked on Marty and Byron. They're still out. Look, why don't you two going up to the ski lift. The boys and I will have breakfast and join you later. No last chance to talk you out of this? What are the state police doing way up here? Oh, Natalie, the cocktail waitress, took off last night. Hasn't been seen since. Oh, I see. Well, look, why don't you two get started and we'll join you in about half an hour, okay? Okay, we'll be there. Shall we all? Where do you get to the top? starting. Wow! 
Look at all that gold. Hey, can we take more than six? Two apiece. That's all we can handle. Well, what do you think of me? What do you mean? Well, this is the first time you've seen me sober, isn't it? I'm paid to teach people how to ski, not to think about them. I'm always making scenes like that one last night. Don't you ever make scenes, Gil? I try not to. Well, you don't have to. You can go away to your cabin and burrow in the snow. The people have all the luck. I think you make your own luck. I know you're wrong. Your luck makes you. I was your lucky once, and look what it did. Got a cigarette? Antifreeze in my veins. You talk like a faded woman regretting a misspent life. Well. Here goes the roller coaster. Here goes the roller coaster. Woohoo! Oh, little lady. How old are you, Gil? Thirty. You like to ski, you like to be alone. Things about the same for you as they were ten years ago, right? Pretty much. Ten years ago, I was, uh, 16. Ten million years ago. You must have done a lot. I've done everything. So I have my whole life ahead of me. And yours is all used up. Not quite. Comes the rest of mine on that chair list. <laughs> Let's go. Hell, hell, the gang's all here. Are you sure you know what you're in for? This cross country ski run is something I've been dreaming about ever since I was a little kid. When were you ever a little kid, Charles? Everybody stick close and follow my lead. Okay, Gil. Here we go. Here we go. All okay, right, Gil. Right. Yeah, what? We need firewood. Ah. 
What's wrong with you? We're being followed. What? I've been feeling it on the back of my neck all day. You need a haircut. Hey, you're getting pretty useless. <laughs> Don't laugh, Byron. That old tingling has saved many a trapper and prospector. Huh? Yes, to be a old tingling from an old prospector. What about that wood? Well, I said you, if I can get up here, the spirit's willing. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, stay put. I'll uh, be back in a few minutes. And while I'm gone, you can start packing down the snow. What's hitting you? Hey, you gotta forget that girl. I'm not thinking about her. Well, what are you thinking about? The thing that got her. Now, it's on me and it means to get me. And that's what's been following us. You're a bundle of cheer. You better snap out of it fast, smart boy. Yeah, sure. You know, day after tomorrow, Tass is gonna come out here with a ski plane, and we're off to Canada to turn her loose. You knock off the funny talk with nature, boy. Can't stop me from talking. Don't tempt me. What happened? What happened? Oh, nothing. Go back to sleep. Why don't you turn in? I'll take the rest of your watch. Nobody takes my watch. I still got two hours left to go, and I don't want to be a burden on anybody. Finish your watch, and I'm going back to the sack. Anybody that wants a fan watch has got to be a cook. I'm going back to sleep before the next thrilling episode. Sure you're all right? I don't mind. I that. told you, I'll take the watch. kind of tracks. I've never seen anything like it before. Must have passed through here during the night. You were on guard last night. What happened? Nothing you can handle. What kind of an answer is that? You were on guard all last night. Did you see something or didn't you? What I saw, you wouldn't believe. Look, I'm getting sick and tired of this. What did you see last night? Nothing. Maybe I can help you to remember. 
Oh, that would be nice. We could take turns sitting up with him and his friend. Come on, Alex, let's go. <laughs> Make it, Jill. It was mostly downhill. So what? What about the return trip? Well, it looks like a nice place. Maybe we'll stay. We should head back before dawn if we're going to make a campsite by nightfall. Tomorrow? Oh, wasn't that the idea? Well, Jill, we're all a little tired. Couldn't we stay over a day and rest? That's fine with me. I'd like you to meet my... Oh, Help! <laughs> As I was starting to say, I'd like you to meet my housekeeper, Small Dove. How do you do, Small Dove? How do you do? You'll have to forgive my son. His head was run over by a horse last week. <laughs> Time for chow. Say, Gil. Uh, tell me something. How much land you got here? Oh, about 20 acres. Does this uh, lake get pretty solidly frozen over? Yeah, it's pretty frozen. But I wouldn't try walking on it. <laughs> Say, Gil, how much, how much money can you make as a ski instructor? Well, you can't make as much money here as you could at a place like Aspen. But I get by. Will you make enough money to live on and be happy? For sure. You can't base happiness on the amount of money you make. <laughs> well, I'm not knocking money, but well, there are other things. Besides, I got this property and the ski shop. Well, basically, you do pretty good, then. Yeah, it works out OK. And nobody's your boss. Well, nobody tells me what to do, if that's what you mean. Well, don't you have to keep pushing? Or don't you feel like taking it easy? <laughs> well, I like what I'm doing. I think that's about as easy as you can take it. <laughs> We better go on in. Small Dove's probably got dinner ready. I think I know why Byron eats like that. Why is that? He has to keep himself stuck to prevent his brain from slipping down his throat into his stomach. <laughs> now let's pause for a brief look at the news. The biggest story to hit the Black Hills since the murder of Wild Bill Hickok was Sunday's sensational robbery at the Broken Boot Mine in Deadwood. What? Authorities believe the bandits could not have left the vicinity by the single daily train and therefore must be hiding out somewhere in the area. Police also believe that the simultaneous mine explosion in which watchman Leonard Wilsey lost his life was in some way connected with the robbery, perhaps as a diversion. In a moment, the weather. Can you beat that? It must have happened right after we left. Yes, sir, we'd have heard about it. The weatherman says snow and heavy overcast for Deadwood and Lead all day Tuesday, with strong winds Wednesday, possibly clearing Thursday. And now, back to Gil. music in a mellow mood. Will the weather be the same here as it is in town? Just about. I hope it clears for the trip back. Better clear tomorrow. Why tomorrow? We're staying here, remember? Well, I hope I'm sharp enough. 
What do you do up here on these long winter nights, Gil? Read, mostly. What kind of stuff? Sometimes I just flip open the encyclopedia. Something interesting on almost every page. Don't you ever have a yen to cut out and make the big city? What for? Well, that's living. Really? I went to San Francisco once. I was there for about a week. I think I saw just about everything there was to see in that length of time. Didn't like it? Oh, no, it was wonderful. But there's something about these mountains and trees, wind, makes everything else kind of insignificant. Oh, I guess it takes all kinds. Your turn, mountain man. Man, man, mountain, 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 man, man. I think you're lovely. Keep your hands off, Miss Bullett. I'll treat my secretary any way I feel like it. You can keep your nose out of it. Unless you want a 38 caliber nose job. till the plane gets here. And I'll take care of it myself. But if you're not doing anything, you can go outside and build a fire. Keep it going. Just in case that idiot Tasser tries to come in ahead of the storm. Gypsy? With a big try, Galahad. Fortunately, I do that sort of thing all the time. Alex had a perfect right to slap me. Maybe I'll kill him someday, but I can't blame him for being sore. Why don't you get out? That's what I keep telling myself. But I know I'll never have the guts. I've become part of Alex. Maybe a sick part, but a permanent one. What are you really afraid of? I was an underpaid model in a wholesale house. And I met Alex. He's young and loaded. I liked the way he pushed me around. I liked it then. Now it's too late to go back. And I don't know if I really want to go back. I don't know what I want. But I know I'd rather have Alex than nothing at all. You're selling yourself short. Well, there's a law of supply and demand, mister. And I don't hear any bidders.
Hey, take it easy, huh? I'm sorry, baby. I'm not Florence Nightingale. Backwood stations have any news during the night? Why are you so concerned with the news? It affects business. There's a threat of war. People have stopped buying fireworks. What's it to you? In a moment, the weather. Which leads them to believe they are still in the area. There are no further clues. On the weather picture, forecasters warn that the new low moving in from Canada will bring blizzards to portions of the Dakotas sometime before Wednesday noon. In other parts of the country... Blizzards. What's your worry? It might not come anywhere near here. Meanwhile, we can take it easy. Or are you in a hurry to get somewhere? What's that supposed to mean? Just a question. There you go, all fixed up. Thanks, Jim. Huh? Hot milk and graham crackers. For me? You were very brave. Feeling any better? Never better. It was a pretty dumb stunt you pulled. I pulled it on my own time. What time? You've got a 24-hour-a-day job. Yeah. But my business with that baby outside is strictly personal. It's the most personal thing that's ever happened to me. So far. Any more questions? Thank you for that. How many people do you have working for you in Chicago? Well, about 200. Why? You must have quite a turnover. Good night. Tasser? He won't try to make it with a storm coming up. Doesn't make any difference anyway. We'll take a walk. Work is a beautiful thing when somebody else is doing it. You should try it sometime. Hey, give me the axe. You'll probably chop your leg off. Oh, it's a leg one way or the other. Well, it wouldn't matter if it was just any old leg. You think you've noticed? Kill, I'm beginning to understand how you feel about this place. It's comfortable and warm. At night, I like to listen to the wind trying to get in. You think it ever will? Not while I've got two hands to hold it back. You know, they're going to kill you. You don't seem very surprised. No, I'm not. How do they figure to get out of here? There's a plane coming. It was due this morning. Probably delayed by the weather. Then we were going to go to Canada. We're going? I would like to stick around if you have me. I haven't really thought about it. Not true. Well, maybe not completely. Well, I didn't know anything about that killing until I heard it over the radio. You don't know me, and I don't know you at all. You got it in your mind you want to return to nature, and I'm part of it. But what happens when you get bored? How do you know what I think? 
I don't know. I wish I did. I know one thing for sure. I'm sending Small Dove back to her relatives. And I'm heading back to blow the whistle on your friends. If you still want to come along, meet me between 6 and 6.30 on the ridge where we first saw the cabin. Strong-looking woman, that small dove. Big falcon. Too bad we have to kill her. Why knock her off? I kind of like that hefty old squaw. When Tassler comes, she goes. Along with Marty and the cowboy. Marty sure is flip. He's dangerous. You really think he saw something? <laughs> Yeah, pink snowman. <laughs> hey, boss, I found it. Found what? The cougar's cave. More than 50 people paid their last respects to Leonard Wilsey, who was tragically killed in the mine explosion last Sunday. And that's the news up to 5 o'clock. Where's Davy Crockett? He went hunting. Hunting at night? That's about four, hunting a deer. Venison? Sounds great. When was the last time we had venison, Alex? Well, about two years ago at the Key Club. At the Key Club? Mm -hmm. Chicago. You can only afford venison on your birthday, Alex. Out here, all it takes is a scent of nature and a strong hand on the trigger. We're running off at the mouth tonight. Why don't you drink and get fractured? You'll be normal. What did we do on my birthday that year, Alex? Your birthday? When is my birthday, Alex? Remember? Well, that year we spent my birthday in Florida. Pulled a bankroll robbery at the Miami Fireworks Company. Oh, yeah, I remember. Killed two birds with one stone. Got 150 grand and put the Southern competition out of business. Many happy returns. They're acting mighty peculiar tonight. What are we going to do after this job, Alex? Oh, well, same as we always do. Why? I've got an idea. Why not retire? Retire? You're a rich man, Alex. You pick the bones of a thousand boobs who happen to have enough money to catch her eye. You don't have to take chances anymore. Why not quit? Sure, I'm a rich man, Charles. And you're living high because of it. I pick the bones of a thousand boobs, and I'll pick the bones of a thousand more because they are boobs, and they deserve exactly what they get. That old man deserved what he got. Every day, some old man steps in front of a car. I'll send flowers, but I'll never quit. Here's a late highway warning. The west side of Strawberry Canyon Road is now closed and will be for at least another hour. Motorists are again warned not to drive unless absolutely necessary. I guess it is. expected to last through the night. And now a request for Mrs. Bertie Arnold in Deadwood from the Music Memory Album. Where are you going, Charles? For a walk, Charles. Follow it. Hey, boss, I just figured it out. It's Pa. What's Pa? 
Uh, I'm against the wall. It's been driving me crazy. Uh, get out of here. Where's she going? To be away. I gotta follow her. No, you stay with me. Hey! Hey, sweet. This ain't no time for romance. Are you hungry? Look, sweetheart. I gotta follow her. The boss told me to. started before the blizzard. Long way back. Snap out of it, Byron. Snap out of it. I see that you gentlemen have changed your ideas about my eyesight. Shut up. It got small now. Well, maybe it'll be satisfied with it. Not by a long shot. It knows who it's after. We're going to do something. We'll do nothing but stay put. It hasn't tried to get into the cabin yet. As a matter of fact, it ran from us. It didn't run from us. It ran from the fire that Byron threw at us. Well, it doesn't make any difference. What chased it away? We, we, we're out here on a job. We can't afford to have any nightmares. Okay, okay. I never saw such an animal. What is it? I saw pieces of an egg in the mine. Where it got Natalie's. Now that could have been buried there for millions of years until the men working on the mine it. found it. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it chews up the whole state. I don't care if it came from Mars or happened by spontaneous combustion. We're going to Canada with a load of gold, so forget it. You'll get it. You'll get nothing. You got small dough. Probably get Gypsy too. Gypsy. Where is she? I saw her leaving on her skis. Cowboy didn't come back yet either. Gypsy and the cowboy. They deserve each other. Where do you think they went? Uh, probably went back to town. I'm going to get some soup. You're probably tell him about the robbery. I'll get the skis ready. We'd never catch him now. What are we going to do? I'll probably run into that blizzard pretty soon. And I'll either have to hold up or turn back. There's a giant cave right near here. That's the only place they can't hold up. How do you know about the cave? That's where I follow the cougar. All right. I'll try it. We 
beat the storm? Not a chance. Well, what do we do? We'll have to turn back. I knew it was too good to be true. I knew I'd never get away. Now, don't worry. We're not whipped yet. I know of a haunted cave not far from here. If you're not afraid of ghosts, we'll wait there till the storm blows over. Anytime your broomstick is ready. Hey, Byron, knock it off. Hey, meathead, I'm hungry. Can't hear you, boss. Why not? He left? Huh? Where would that imbecile go? Don't ask me, boss. Maybe he's chasing that Indian squaw. Oh, let him go. You know, Jackson told me that the uh, Black Hills are sacred Indian country. Heap bad medicine for evil men from foreign lands. <laughs> they must have heard we were coming. We don't need Byron. I don't think we need anybody. Go back. Go back. I come to help you. You can't help now. I gotta work fast. Is she still alive? Yes, but she has no mind. Cowboy to leave these things laying around. <laughs> what are they? Very pistols. What are they for? They used to fire flares. They can be seen from miles away. They're going to signal anybody. Well, we can use them to light the cave, can't we? Okay. Walter. Got a chance. Marty's coming. 
He knows the monster's here. He's gonna get it. It's sucking her blood. Good Lord. Watch out, 